thank you very much for the kind introduction, uh, Max. Um, basically said everything already I'm going to say in the first slide, so I can uh, keep it a bit uh, shorter. Um, so exactly, so the background and why the first uh, draft of the paper was called Ethnic Parties and National Unity, and now it's only ethnicity and, uh, and electoral integrity, um, is that I'm yeah, working on a research project on ethnic parties, basically to see whether parties um, are uh, empowering minorities or whether they are more, more polarizing ethnic relations, which are both kind of things that have been argued to happen when you do have um, ethnic parties in the country. Um, now, my main interest is to see not whether minorities are actually better represented or whether there's actually more conflict or not, but whether people in the different countries do perceive um, to be better represented or uh, how they do perceive the ethnic relations to be um, in the country. Now, with kind of the intersection with um, perceptions of electoral integrity, that um, kind of fits there as well because obviously elections are kind of focal points in ethnic relations or in all power relations in the country um, as well. So uh, we wanted to see uh, how elections and how procedural fairness is being perceived by people of different ethnic groups. Um, so, so much to the background. Um, if, if like to look at the combination of ethnicity and perceptions of electoral integrity. That, that has, hasn't really been done so far, as far as I know at least. Um, but there are, there's a lot of information or a lot of literature on political attitudes uh, more generally and obviously on ethnicity more generally. And if we look at those, there are kind of clear expectations we can, we can formulate with regard to, to this relationship. Um, so on the one hand, we have a lot of literature on the so-called winner-loser gap. So in the last 10 to 15 years, uh, research on political attitudes has found consistently that people who vote for those in elections who lose, like both, uh, parties or candidates that then lost the elections, um, are consistently less sa satisfied with the way democracy works in a country um, than those who, who won or whose preferred parties won. Um, and that effect, and that is now a more recent work, that effect is actually stronger if people lose consistently. So. It's, it's kind of okay if they only lose one election, but if they lose two, three, four elections, um, then this gap becomes uh, wider. Uh, now, this, this gap has been explained by two, in two different ways, mainly. Uh, one of them is um, the so-called sore loser hypothesis that says that basically just by the process of losing or winning, um, uh, had, it, does one have like a basically a psychological reaction to it? So basically, the positive experience of winning makes you feel more satisfied with basically everything in general, whereas the disappointment of losing makes you feel uh, less satisfied with other things as well. And the other explanation for this is is uh, which we now call for the for lack of a better term like the policy loser hypothesis. It's that people are less satisfied with democracy or less supportive of government or any of these other um, political support um, items because they actually think that they are not going to be represented as well in between the elections. So it's not just a kind of immediate reaction uh, to the elections themselves, but kind of a more rational um, expectations of what may happen or not um, during the, uh, in between the elections. Now in any case, um, losers do feel worse, let's say. Um, and then from the ethnic po politics literature, we knew that we know that in ethnically divided societies, ethnic minorities are always losers, and ethnic minorities are always winners. So we should know from this that those who are always being excluded basically also always feel worse off, feel le um, less satisfied with the way democracy works, um, less uh, perceives electoral integrity to be less so um, than, than winners, um, etc. And so we thought we actually see whether that is um, the case. Now to examine perceptions of electoral integrity, the World Value Survey um, data is of course very um, useful here. So for those who don't know, the last wave of the World Value Survey <coughs> asks nine items on electoral integrity. Um, so the main questions are always, in your view, how often do the following things occur in the country's elections? And you can answer with very often, often, not often or not at all often. And then it goes on to ask about are votes are counted fairly, uh, opposition candidates are prevented from running, 
election officials are fair, rich people by elections, etc., etc., and the last one is voters are offered a genuine choice um, at the ballot box. Um, so we thought we are just going to examine each of these um, individually because they do apply to different aspects of the electoral process. And basically we, we thought that if it was really a psychological um, difference between winners and losers, like kind of the sore loser effect, then really you should see it in all of these items. Whereas if it was more kind of the rational expectations or the rational uh, judgment thing, it should only really be in, in some of them, if not if not none, really. Um, and there were a couple of missing data um, in there, and since we are already going to work with minorities and majorities, by yeah, the <laughs> definition of the, uh, of the terms, um, we had to impute the missing values to make sure that we don't have too many um, yeah, missing values in there. So, in particular, we wanted to examine the perceptions of electoral integrity with regards to ethnic status. Um, now here, it's necessary to take the political status of the different ethnic groups into consideration. So we need to go beyond the usual demographic kind of, what's your language, what's your religion, um, sort of um, uh, categorization. Since like in some countries, religion, for example, isn't really that important as in, uh, in other countries, uh, and the same goes for language, etc. Now, originally, um, we wanted to measure kind of the politicization of ethnicity with the absence or presence of ethnic parties. But you can have ethnic parties without representation, and you can have no ethnic parties without, but still have politicization of ethnicity, etc. So we thought um, that's not the best um, measure. Um, so instead, we were we are going to go with the. Um, uh, ethnic power relations data set from the from the ETH Zurich, um, and they basically code ethnic group status politically or not um, on the basis of lots of different sorts of sources. Um, so they see are they are they represented in parliament? Are they represented substantively? Um, is is it maybe not at all an issue whether one is um, an ethnic minority majority, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And so they come up or they code different groups um, into seven um, status <coughs> IDs, um, from monopoly to dominant, senior partner, junior partner, powerless, discriminated minorities, or ir irrelevant um, um, ethnic groups. And so we matched these group statuses um, with demographic information in the World Value Survey by kind of combining uh, information on ethnicity, language, religion, and region. So for example, in Georgia, um, people who are speaking Armenian, Azerian, Azerbaijani, Russian, they have all been coded as powerless because that's how they've been coded in the EPMR data. Um, Georgian Muslims have been coded as powerless because they are also um, a minority, but non-Muslim Georgian speakers are coded as uh, the dominant majority. Um, whereas like, for example, in Mexico, whether you speak Spanish or not, um, or which religion you have is not really the distinguishing factor. And um, so there we used um, skin color. Um, and so overall, the, the EPR status groups, they are kind of based on country internal um, relationship, power relationships. So you only have senior partners where you have junior partners, etc. So you can't really compare them across countries. Um, so we instead put them into majority, which is like monopoly dominant and senior partner. Um, then we left junior partner out because that's kind of a, yeah, could be either. Um, and the powerless discriminated um, ones we both put into um, the minority group. <coughs> um, then of course there are also other variables that could affect the way people perceive elections to be, whether they're fair or not, um, etc. And that of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, is whether one belongs to the electoral loser or electoral winner. So we coded um, that accordingly as to which party they would vote for if tomorrow were election. So that was the only um, one available uh, in the World Value Survey data. Um, and then, of course, uh, other control variables such as um, age, gender, education, and income that may also um, affect 
people's perceptions of electoral integrity. Then since this is a comparative um, analysis, of course, we also need to take into consideration country level variation that may affect perceptions of electoral integrity. And now usually people use for this um, or have been using uh, levels of democracy or GDP or similar. Um, but we thought we are going to use a more direct measure of the quality of elections, namely the perceptions of electoral integrity index um, asked um, to experts, um, also by the project, of course. And here, uh, the, the great thing is that the questions are actually more or less the same as the ones asked in the World Value Survey data. So for each item, uh, for each analysis of the different World Value Survey data, uh, we can ask, or we can use the same item as a control um, as the, at the country level. Uh, the only item that's not being matched in the PEI is the voters are bribed question, and for that we use the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index um, instead. Then another country level variable is the electoral system, of course. Um, so for example, losers in proportional representational systems may not feel as much as losers as losers in majoritarian system, because in the latter the like, decision making is not as consensual, for example. Uh, and we are going to uh, uh, do all of these in multiple <coughs> logic analysis. So we are going to see how likely are people to say very often or often to the individual um, statements. But before we do this, we could just have a quick look at the descriptors for each of the different um, variables, and I hope that's readable. And um, so these are only those ones where the questions have been asked in kind of positive terms. Um, so with regard to electoral integrity, how often are votes counted fairly, uh, is, is there a fair coverage, etc. Et um, so the or orange ones are the ones that said uh, not at all often or not often, and the green ones, those that, that said yes, um, the elections are actually fair um, in each of them. And so for our purposes, we could just basically compare the length of the green bars um, for now. And so we would expect that minorities don't think that elections are that fair, so the green bars should be shorter um, for each of them. Uh, and minorities are the ones in the middle. And we can actually see, with the exception of E, journalists provide fair coverage of elections, Minori the minority bar is actually shorter than the majority one in the bottom, but only just, so they are not really that big the differences. And the junior partner bars are on the top, they are actually even shorter than the minority ones. So there is no kind of linear relationship um, in there either. Um, so again, and according to this, we could say, well, yeah, ethnic losers as well have kind of this uh, winner-loser gap, um, but the differences are really not that big. Now, with regard to electoral malpractice, um, we can have a look there as well. And now it should be the other way around, that for minorities, the green bar should be longer um, because they perceive more electoral malpractice, uh, supposedly. And here as well, we can see that this is usually the case. Um, again, the, the news coverage is just about, it's more or less the same for minority and majority. Um, but yeah, usually the, the expectations hold. Um, and, but again, junior partners have even stronger perceptions of malpractice, with the exception of the of B, of opposition candidates are prevented from running um, for some reason. Um, so now, what we really just need to see is whether this aggregate picture that basically um, says, yeah, the winner looks like it does exist with regard to ethnicity also exists when we control for all the other um, variables. Now, th in the paper, the last page, or last but one page or so, um, there is the, there are all the numbers. Um, I'm not going to show them here. Um, I'm just going to give you like kind of a brief summary um, of that. So I'm going to show you in a second the results for minority and junior dummies in, in comparison to the majority dummy. The loser and those who have abstained dummies in comparison to the electoral winner dummies. And then because I thought it may be of interest for you, the, the PEI um, results. And you don't need to read through the numbers because you've got pluses and minuses here. 
So um, the symbols are only there where there's actually a significant difference. And I hope it makes sense. I try to make them smaller if the effect size is smaller. Um, so looking just at the minority in, in the upper line, we can see that kind of, again, as expected, they are less likely than majorities to say that officials are fair. They are less likely to say that there's a genuine choice. And on the other hand, they are more likely to say that rich by elections and that voters are threatened. So that is kind of as, as expected, but those are supposed to be small signs, so the effect, effect size isn't really that big again. With um, junior partners, they are a little bit bigger, but not at all how you would expect them. So actually, junior partners do perceive much less malpractice than majorities, than who, those who are actually kind of winning all the time. Now, in comparison to electoral losers and electoral winners, this is not particularly, um, yeah, it doesn't fare that well because losers and those who have abstained actually consistently show much less um, electoral integrity or, and much more electoral practice. Um, so, yeah, according to this, we would basically have to say that this ethnic winner loser gap does not really hold. Um, even though the literature basically would have to, uh, yeah, would lead you to expect that. So from this, we could we could argue that partisanship, like winning or losing electorally, is more important than winning or losing eth ethnically, <laughs> um, even in ethnically divided societies, because all the ones where the EPR has actually coded these different ones is where they are politically relevant groups and not just where you could if you wanted to find ethnic groups. Um, now, because this is so different from what you would expect from the literature, we tried to come up with alternative explanations for this. And we thought well, one of them could be that there are just really low expectations among minority, um, uh, ethnic minority voters. Um, so because they are by definition powerless or discriminated, they could think, oh, well, they, they are basically resigned to the idea that the elections are not going to be in their favor anyways, so they are not invested at all. And because of that, there is no kind of disappointment um, after the election has happened. So that would kind of fit um, with a recent study that has been conducted in Uganda, um, where they have found that people who are more engaged in the elections also show bigger disappointment following, um, following the elections when they have lost. Um, but if that were the case, we, sh we would see or we should see more disappointment among junior partners as well because they actually do have a little bit of a chance, at least as compared to um, minorities um, here. Um, so according to this, that's already not so likely, but we can also test this by looking at how important people think elections are for either their own situations or for, for uh, the economic development of the country. because. Um, well, if they couldn't really care less about the results of the elections, then they also sh yeah, shouldn't differ in that from the majorities, right, um, in, their, in how important they think elections are. But ethnic losers and electoral losers are actually more likely to say that elections are important. Um, so in that regard, basically the low expectations uh, explanation doesn't really um, fit either. So that basically just leads us to conclude that there are no <coughs> differences between um, ethnic minorities, majorities, and, and possibly junior partners. Um, but And that again kind of shows that it's not really a sore loser effect um, at all, because if there was ethnic minorities should feel disappointed basically after every election. Um, so we thought it's kind of more of a policy loser effect and that then in this regard, policy representation is more important than ethnic representation. Um, but yeah, we are still kind of open on this um, question. And so we were thinking of next steps we could um, take in order to uh, examine this a bit more in detail. And so one of them would obviously be to, to look at the ethnic electoral integrity or ethnic ethnicity and political support issues more closely with other um, attitudes as well or with other items as well. Um, 
then one of the main items where there was a difference actually between minorities and majorities was the genuine vote choice question, which is also kind of to be expected. Um, and a similar question has been asked in several waves of the Asian barometer data. So we thought we may um, uh, take a look at that and that would give more information on 13 other countries and over time with over time changes. Um, another option would be to look more closely at the junior senior partner relationship um, because that seems a bit odd with the junior partners there. And we could do that particularly with Apple Barometer data because they've been now in the last wave asking the same question as in the World Value Survey data. Um, and that would again give another kind of 30 countries. Um, and the data should be published soon-ish as well. Yeah, and we'd be looking forward for any other hints or recommendations or <coughs> comments. Thank you very Thank much. You.